Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new episode of Recovery. My name is Alan Kapatashungu. I'm the co-founder of Front Door. And in this episode, I'm really delighted to chat with Anthony Hitt, President and CEO of Engel and Volkers America. First of all, Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's a, it's a little overcast and rainy day in New York City, but I'm back in New York City and I'm back awesome. in my office. Awesome. So that's a, at the start. That's a start. That's a good day already. That's a good day already. <laughs> awesome. So first of all, uh, let me just give you uh, all the quick uh, background intro on, uh, on Anthony, uh, if I can. So prior to joining Engel and Volkers, Anthony worked with Sotheby's International Realty in LA for eight years and closed up to 400 real estate uh, sales transactions, uh, amounting to nearly half a billion dollars, which is pretty awesome. And uh, so as a result in LA, and I think it was LA Magazine named Anthony, one of the city's super agent, which is really, really cool as well. <laughs> You've done your have, research, Alan. Yeah, we're gonna have time to talk about it a little early, a little later, so that's cool. Um, so in, in, in January 2014, then Anthony um, has been the president, since January 2014, he's been the president and CEO of Angle and Volkers, which personally I think it's a really, really amazing company. So in this role at Angle, uh, you know, Angle and Volkers emergence in the U.S. Uh, since 2010 happened because of Anthony's pretty much involvement. He's going to talk to us a little bit as well about it. So Angle and Volkers is now really, really well established in the U.S. under Anthony's leadership. We have almost 150 offices and close to 3,000 real estate advisors spanning the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. That's, those, those are, that, that's pretty awesome as well. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to one-up you because you did your research, but I think you got some old. We're actually at 250 offices now, not wow. 150, wow. and nearly 5,000 advisors in the, uh, in the Americas. Okay, scratch that. It's even better. <laughs> even, even better, even better. That's, that's awesome. So um, first thing first, uh, what I would like to gonna get us started uh, with Anthony is to, can you, if that possible, describe to us um, and walk us through your quote unquote typical work day during this uh, unprecedented pandemic? Like how, is, how your day has been so far? Uh, my day's changed so much and uh, I'll give you a little backstory first. Sure. You know, pre, Pre-COVID, uh, you know, my day was never the same because I was traveling probably 75% of the time. Yes. Whether that be going to another office opening, uh, another shop opening, excuse me, or uh, speaking at uh, uh, an industry event, or traveling to our headquarters in Hamburg, Germany, okay. uh, and being a part of uh, uh, board uh, discussions about the future, and everything kind of wrapped around that travel. Okay. Uh, what's happened during the pandemic, you know, like so many people, I've uh, you know, had to... Uh, shelter in place. <laughs> yes. so for, the first, for the first months of the pandemic, I, I worked, uh, you know, I, I live in Manhattan and in okay. Manhattan, I don't have all that space that is such a luxury in other parts of the, uh, of the country. So I spent <laughs> a lot of my time working at my dining room table like so many other people. Yes. Uh, but, but a typical day for me is, uh, you know, is get up, uh, hopefully get a little, a uh, little exercise. Oh. Uh, did not do so good on that during the pandemic, but I'm <laughs> coming back around. And, uh, and then go into uh, just a review of the, uh, the schedule for the day with my assistant, uh, Gabrielle. And then yes. from there, we, we, uh, we work ourselves uh, out into a variety of calls. And sometimes I'm doing interviews. And, uh, you know, and, and, and right now, we've been focusing a lot on uh, – we have over two, almost 300 partners in the United States and Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean. That's incredible. And so one of the things I've been doing that's been really, really uh, incredible for me – is I've actually been calling and having 30 minute conversations with every one of our partners. So wow. two times a day, I'm on a 30 minute call and it's probably been one of the most powerful things I've done since I've been in this role is to actually, you know, in some cases reconnect, but in a lot yes. of cases connect, connect with franchisees that I really haven't had a chance to spend a lot of time with. That's awesome. That is really awesome. And it, it definitely looks like a full day. So <laughs> that's awesome. there, there's um, never a shortage of things to do. I don't think in anybody's role, whether you're the, the CEO <laughs> or the receptionist or anybody uh, else along the way, there's always plenty of work to be done, especially these days. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Anthony, as the president and, and, and as the CEO of Engel and Volkers America, you lead, as you said, now close to 5,000 advisors in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and Caribbean as well, you just mentioned. So, my question to you is, how did you not only stay on top of, you know, your employees, but also your advisors' needs? at Angle and Workers during this crisis? Like, how did you manage it all? How did you do it? 
Well, well first of all, you, you keep saying you, and I and I appreciate that that compliment. But the reality yeah. is, it's not just me. We Absolutely. have an incredible team of uh, of almost seventy employees that are working full time at the brand level here yes. in the Americas, plus a headquarters in Hamburg, Germany, with a couple of hundred extra people awesome. who are constantly working on seeing how we can make what we do better for the consumer and for the advisor because we yes. do believe that when our brand means something to the consumer, when a consumer expects a certain level of service, when they expect a certain level of representation, that's what attracts advisors to this brand, that's what attracts franchisees to this brand. Agreed. Uh, the, so the way we've done that is we've, you know, old fashioned relationships. <laughs> I mean, we, we stay in touch with our uh, consumers. We do a lot of, uh, a lot of research. We are big believers in, uh, in, uh, in, in actionable data which means, uh, again, surveying and statistical data, but also just good old-fashioned phone calls and saying, you know, how, how's it going? You know, as I was just mentioning, each year, one of the things I get to do when I travel is I go out to all of these different events. Okay. And those events help spark new ideas for me. They validate other ideas. And, uh, and a lot of times, that's how we decide where to progress, uh, along with hearing what our network is saying to us. Yes. This year, I haven't been able to do that, because of the the circumstances, COVID. these phone calls with our uh, with our franchisees has been one of the best for me because they're telling me what's what's working and what they need more of and and how we can be better at what we do. So that that's how we're staying in touch with with everyone. Just that good old awesome. fashioned <laughs> communications and a, and a lot of uh, Google Meets. Yes, and a lot of phone calls and, and Zoom meetings and, and yes, and all of the sorts. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Um, what is fascinating to me, uh, Anthony, is that not only you also leading what's happening in the U.S., but obviously when I say you, you and, and the incredible, incredible leadership that you've put in place, uh, but you also uh, in Canada, in Caribbean, in Mexico. So my question to you is, culturally speaking, did you have to adapt some t some type of a message or strategy as it pertains to just how you, are you how were you able to talk to your teams in such different places in, in those large markets? Um, one thing as a, as a, as a global brand, you know, we, we understand that there are cultural differences and there Absolutely. are differences in different markets. And so that's something I think we just do as part of our DNA. Okay. Uh, but that being said, the, the pandemic especially has been at different phases in different locations where in New right. York city, everything was completely shut down. Real estate was not considered to be essential service. Uh, you know, businesses were closing. You know, that was a very different circumstance Absolutely. than, let's say, someone in uh, Bozeman, Montana, uh, <laughs> where the, to this day they've had very few cases and sure. life is pretty much the normal that we all had six, seven, eight months ago. Agreed. So, you know, so other than just being aware of what, what where a, a different market is, uh, no, our message has been, been the same. And, and our message has always been very similar that, you know, we're here for our partners, we're here for our uh, advisors, we're here for Absolutely. our consumers. Most and, uh, you know, whatever that is, you know, we're going to do our best to, to provide whatever services that are needed. Uh, again, we kind of stayed with the pandemic. Uh, you know, if it was business as normal, we were there. But if it was business abnormal, you know, like during pandemic, we, we certainly had to increase some of our, you know, uh, some of our communications. Uh, we've had to create new collateral, new materials, you know, new ways of, of doing business uh, in, in some cases. Or in a lot of cases, we already had things <laughs> in place that you know our network never thought about or that we didn't have to use yes. so it wasn't a matter of creating it was a matter of reintroducing something that you know we always had absolutely i had actually had a to kind of piggyback on what you just said i had a conversation with uh, uh bob goldberg at nar and he was telling me exactly what you just shared there that it, it wasn't about creating new material it's just that with covid happening it just gave a little bit more time to his member to just kind of look at what they already, they've already built, right? So right. it was more about just reintroducing the tools and the, the resources that were already available, but just because as we were all running around pretty much, we didn't have the time to sit down and just look at it. So it makes yeah, sense. You, a, a lot of times we don't know what we need until we need it. You know, exactly. That's the <laughs> education. You can teach all day long, but if it's not relevant to you today, you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't sink in. But the second you need it, then you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? <laughs> and the good news is, we were uh, we were actually far more prepared than a lot of brands uh, awesome. for this pandemic because we did have a platform in place. So it was a lot of reintroducing and not having to to scurry trying to find some new way of handling something. That is awesome. That is actually a common thread that I'm seeing. It's always uh, whether it's you, Anthony, or with Bob and and, and some, uh, Ryan Goldman at, at Coleman, uh, Coleman Banker. It's always about being prepared. They will always tell you that 
obviously they couldn't anticipate something like this right. nobody could but it, it was th there was a certain level of preparation already built into the fiber of the company just in case something happens right just and in case something happens and you're ready to go yeah exactly. that's that's why you're seeing that company like yourself are, are still well that's what i think it, I, I didn't mean to speak over you but i, yeah, I sure. do think from a franchise you know, uh, I, I watched a lot of our competitors reduce their stabs and furlough yes, their stabs exactly. and, and, uh, and terminate their stabs and do all these, these things. And, and one thing I'm really proud of as a, as, a, as a brand, we did not do that in the Americas. That's incredible. Uh, we kept our entire staff. We did not reduce anyone's salaries. We did not furlough anyone wow. uh, you know, because we believe that you know, what, you, what you need from a franchise when things are good is one thing. But when things are not good or things are challenging, that's when your franchise really needs to step up for you and be there. Agreed. And uh, and so we didn't we didn't uh, you know, back away at all. We we came in full full charge and that's ready. Good. And I think that's a part of that being prepared and being confident and just being there when uh, when your network needs you. That's huge. That's actually incredible that you guys didn't even have to follow uh, people. That is really really huge. Con you know. As, as we've seen in the news, like so many, as you say, brokerages have been doing it. And yeah. it's just another, another just short to the testament what you guys are doing over there. So that's really exciting. Um, so Anthony, what's, what's the, one, the one element that was overlooked that you think COVID-19 validated or highlighted as an undeniable demand in our industry? What do you think that something happened during these times and it's now here for stay? There's no, there's no more going back. What, what do you think that element is? Yeah, I think that one's easy. I think it's it's uh, it's probably a toss up, but I'm going to go with the easier answer. Uh, I, it's technology. I, I think there's a lot of us who who are uh, innovators or early adopters, and there was a lot of us that are laggers, and we just kind of you know we 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 got to go kicking and screaming into that next that next phase. Absolutely. And in this industry, there's definitely some of all, and I think there's a lot of us in this industry who didn't really you know we weren't prepared as well as we should have been and, uh, to, to use the technology. And I think what we found out is that in probably seven months, we've moved, we've advanced seven years from a technology standpoint wow, that's when it comes to adoption. Yes. Because there's a lot of people that never thought they would do a, a Zoom call like <laughs> we're doing right now or Absolutely. a Google Meet or use yes. Google Chat or, 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 or use yeah. uh, you know, uh, 3D uh, imaging on uh, on a property showing or do, you know, to do uh, 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 a streaming yeah. a live streaming tool to to, <laughs> to, to to showcase an open house yes and while there was always a few people doing it it just oh I don't I'm not doing that that's all you know that's all a, a fad or that my consumers aren't going exactly to want. exactly and, and what happened here is we all had to do it because that was the <laughs> only way we could do business and what we found out is it wasn't as hard as we thought it was yes and that our consumers actually liked it. Awesome. And, and I think what we're going to find is even as things hopefully get back to some new normal or stable normal in the future, yes. a lot of the technology will be here to stay. I and agree. People, uh, found that you can, uh, you, you, I don't think you're going to replace people by, by technology, but you found out how technology can really enable you to still be there when you can't be there. Definitely. Completely agree with you. I don't think that technology will be able to re to replace agents or advisors yeah. anytime soon but as it pertains to just helping them be more productive more efficient that's actually what i believe technology should be used for in real estate rather of trying to oppose technology uh, versus agents or advisor which i think is a is a, is a completely silly debate um, and we saw and we saw that over the last over yes. the last seven months and we exactly. will continue to see that over the uh, the months ahead Agreed, completely agree. Um, so, Anthony, can you share um, with us a little bit about the state of business? Because the, the great thing about uh, about your take here is that you have this incredible eagle eye view as it pertains to what's happening in the U.S., but also in Canada, in the Caribbean, in Mexico. What are you seeing? Uh, what are you seeing as it pertains to the market, and how are how are things are going pretty much in the real estate industry in, in your point of view? Uh, I, I I'll speak to our business first, but I sure. think it seems to be consistent with what I'm hearing, uh, you know, in the industry okay. is, you know, you know, all of us in March had those, hopefully had our, our, our contingency plans, yes. you know, those plans in case of emergency, you break glass <laughs> and you do that. Exactly. And, and we all, most of us either created those plans or broke the glass <laughs> on our plans. And we expected to see a year where we were going to see, uh, you know, declines anywhere from 25 to 75 to 90%. Yes. Uh, you know, we had one plan in place here where we were looking at 
you know, uh, uh, you know, six six plus months at seventy five percent below our normal. Um, and uh, at about two months in, okay. we realized that those plans were not going to be necessary. Um, and to the contrary, what we've seen is our business as a as a as a network in the okay. Americas, but even globally, but here in the Americas, is that we're actually up not only year over 2019, we're actually doing better than our 2020 projections that I remember thinking maybe we're a little too aggressive. That's so, so we're running very, very strong. Uh, in those calls I've been talking to you about that I'm doing with all of our licensed partners, yes. uh, what I'm also finding out is you know, 90% of them are having very similar experiences in their market. The, the okay. real estate is, is very strong. And for a variety of reasons. I yeah. think it's, it's people maybe deciding that if they're going to be in their home 24 seven for months on end, maybe they want a little more space to, uh, to live. Uh, you know, it, it sounds great to be with your, your spouse and your kids and your <laughs> in-laws and all of that until you're doing it 24 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week. And you're suddenly thinking, well, maybe I need another room. Maybe I need a bigger backyard. I, so I, think, I think some people are making some changes in their, in their, uh, uh, in their, in their lifestyle or the space they want. Absolutely. So, yeah, so it's been quite quite good, and and uh, no, we still have a few areas, uh, okay. and some of the bigger metropolitan areas are a good example. New York City, where I'm at, you know, it's it's tight here right now. There's wow. uh, I think people are uh, in the, the, from the city are moving out into the uh, the the areas around okay. because they want that extra space. But I don't think they're ready to give up that great space they have in the city. Yeah, absolutely. But so we're not seeing that abundance of inventory even in the city. You know, I, okay. I, I, I say I want to live out in the Hamptons or I want to live someplace else during a pandemic, but yeah. I sure want to have my apartment that's two blocks from my office. Exactly. And I don't think I'm willing to give that up. So I think we're seeing that, that in, in New York City. But for the most part, business has been very good for, for us as a network. Okay. Uh, even globally, we are doing better uh, than, than uh, 2019 and above our 2020 uh, projections or forecasting. That's incredible. And that includes markets. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, we've been you know, hit hard in France and yes. Italy and yes. Greece, uh, even in the, the DACA, uh, the German-speaking regions. You know, it's, been, it's been tough out there, but the, the positives uh, have been very positive, and, and, and hopefully some of those areas that have been harder hit um, where real estate was hurt badly, uh, you know, uh, France, Italy, some of the others, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll see a resurgence there. And there, is, there are positive signs there that the markets are, are improving as well. Agreed, agreed, completely agreed. Um, so as um, a follow-up to that, what, what advice would you give to you know, new advisors, unfortunately starting uh, in, in the business in these complicated times? Like they, they just got the license, this is what uh, they, they, they were really interested in doing and the COVID happened. So what, what advice would you give to somebody starting in the midst of this uh, pandemic pretty much? Um, I would start off by, regardless of when you get started, there's always some thing, some excuse yes. for why you can't be successful now, Agreed. why it's harder now. When I started, uh, my, my first day in real estate was September 10th, 2001. Wow. So that was, Monday, that was Monday before the Tuesday. That's um, and, and so that was my, my first day in real estate. <laughs> and of course, the whole world came to a complete screeching halt. And, uh, and I thought, what, what have I done? I've got myself ready to go into this business. Yes. And, uh, and I still had my first transaction within the first 45 days of my career. Wow. And, awesome. and I never looked back. Um, and the advice that I, I took back then, and this advice that I would have given pre-pandemic and during the pandemic, and I'll save advice I'm going to give three years from now, whatever that will bring, is, is just find your niche. Find the area that you want to focus on become the expert in that market. No one should know more than you about real estate in that market. Awesome. And then start building relationships with everyone who owns or wants to own a home in that area. Awesome. If you do those things, do the research, find a focus, yes. do the research, become the master of, of everything in that market, make sure that audience knows you by getting to know all of them. And, and that means building relationships, awesome. not just sending a postcard, not just <laughs> running a Facebook ad, yes. but actually going out and getting to know that neighborhood. Uh, as long as they know you're in real estate, eventually you will put their needs ahead of your own and you will be incredibly successful. 
That is awesome. Those are really, really great advice. And it's funny because you can actually transpose that as well, even to entrepreneurship, what you just said there. Find your focus and just find something that you're really, really good at and nobody should know more than you on that subject. That is awesome. If you do that, nobody can beat you. And here's what you, Alan, you and I have talked about this before. One of the things we both know is that when you become the master, when you have that expertise, that gives you the magic of confidence. Absolutely. Because Agreed. then you're not worried that someone's <laughs> going to say something to you that you don't know the answer to. Exactly. If nobody knows anymore that you've got all the confidence. And that's what you need on a listing presentation Agreed. or working with a buyer. Awesome. And uh, if you do those things, you'll be successful. But like you said, it works in any business, whether it's Absolutely. real estate or anything else. Agreed. Agreed. Those are really, really great um, advice. Um, so, Anthony, you were ranked among the top producing agents for so many years. And the thing that I would like to ask you here is what are some of the lessons that you've learned about you in this crisis now as a president and the CEO that you could share with all of us? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, I, I think it's not to discount mental health. Okay. I think yes. it's, it's not to discount the fact that no matter where you are in life or career, Agreed. that these things have an effect on you. Yes. And, uh, and, you know, and, and I think as real estate professionals, especially, you know, we're used to dealing with people in some of their most exciting and some of their toughest times. Absolutely. You know, that, you know, they're either growing up and they're building their, their <laughs> life and business and they're yes. increasing their family or they're going the, you know, the other way. They're downsizing. They're their downsizing. Family <laughs> on births, deaths, weddings. Those are the reasons yes. that people buy and sell properties. Um, and, and I think this has probably magnified that, uh, not only for us and the, taking care of our clients, but for ourselves and our own families, because there is just that, that, that huge tension right now that we Absolutely. all are facing. You know, Absolutely. typically when something happens, you know, there's the, the event yeah. and it's really bad, but then over time, you know, it, it, it starts to, you know, time cures all as they say. <laughs> Absolutely. The fact is we haven't had the event. We're still in this limbo. We, is it, is it over and it's getting better? Is it, is it just starting and is it going to get worse? No, we don't know that don't right know. now. Yeah. And I think that's creating a lot of extra tension and stress. And, and what I realize is it doesn't matter where you're setting in your career or your life. You know, that, that anxiety is part of it. And, okay. um, and so for me, it's, it's not only understanding that for me personally, but also understanding that for the people who are around me, whether they're the employees of our, of our team here or our network or our advisors, awesome. the consumers we're dealing with. It's just understanding that that's a, that is critical right now. It's a, it's a tough time for everyone. Absolutely. And, and that we all need to be cognizant of that. And so maybe when we pushed a little harder in the past, maybe pull back just a little bit now. Yes, absolutely. Maybe make that extra phone call just to see how somebody's doing I without any other ulterior motives. Those are the things that I think. So maybe a little more humanity. I love that. Uh, would, yeah. would be uh, would be my. Uh, I don't know what I've learned, but really has come to the front. I love that. That's actually awesome, especially in times like this. I think if if there's one threat that you just want to have as a as as a, as a characteristic to a person, this is this is more humanity. You you, you never have enough of it anyway. So no, that's that's awesome. a, I think I think that's a, that's a good one. I mean, it's a yeah, it's a it's a tough time in the United States now. Agreed. Uh, regarding of your your politics, your health, uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, uh, you know all the issues around uh, on racism, and there's just yes. so much going on right now. Absolutely, and and we've dealt with a lot of these in our history, but not yes. usually all at one time, and not with the magnifying glass of your know, 24 hour news and exactly. Facebook and all of that. So it <laughs> just 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 being aware you're not the only one that's feeling the way you do. And uh, yeah, one of those old ideas of you know, treat other people the way you'd like to be treated. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's really, really awesome. So um, in your opinion, uh, Anthony, do you think that this uh, hiatus forced our industry to redefine or reimagine how work gets done? And if so, how? This could be on an agent standpoint. This could be, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but how do you think that uh, this this force hire hire is just really fun the way we're gonna work from now on. Uh, yeah, I again, I, I I think it it will change so much. Um, uh, you know, I, I just look at my my situation. I'm in uh, my yes. office again here on Park Avenue. Okay, we've got uh, twelve thousand square feet on the on the eleventh floor of this building. Okay. Today there are three of us in the space. Wow, three people, and and uh, and maybe later this week we'll get really busy and we'll have six people. <laughs> uh, 
You know, That's this incredible. Is, this is the space that you normally would have had you know, 70 or 80 people running around exactly. on any given day. Yeah. Uh, so it, 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 for anyone to say that things haven't changed uh, you know, is, is, is ridiculous. But I, I, I think there will be a lot of positives. I think we will realize okay. that I think we will set our priorities higher on some of the things that maybe we didn't. I agree. I think we're realizing now, uh, I mean, I certainly have, that my team can be as productive, if not more productive, without having to actually come into the city and, and work in this building. Absolutely. I think a lot of companies have figured that out. Yes. I think on the other hand, one of the challenges we have right now is that while our productivity as a, as a nation, as a workforce is much higher, our happiness is down Absolutely. because we're missing that, that human contact, that ability exactly. to, uh, to sit in the, in, the, in the lounge here and, and laugh with other people over lunch. Absolutely. Uh, to bump into someone at the, at the, at the coffee machine and, and just talk a little you bit about chat, life. Yeah. Yes. And we don't have that right now. So I think we're going to have to figure some things out. But I think we, there is a lot of things that have changed. I think we will use technology more to communicate. Agreed. I don't think space or place will be, uh, from a work standpoint, will be as important as it was. I, I was in a, a conference put together by MIT a few weeks ago. Okay. And they were talking about, I th I'm, I'm probably rambling a little bit, but they were talking no, no, perfect. about commercial real estate. Okay. And they were talking about the way we were going to work in the future. And in the past, and this is very true of our organization, we would say, oh, let's, let's do this. Let's put together an off-site meeting. <laughs> we'll go someplace and we'll go to a little place exactly. and we'll have, we'll have a meeting. And... Uh, and I think that's going to change now because in the future, I think, it's, well, why don't we have an on-site meeting? Why don't we all go to headquarters <laughs> and, uh, and actually change? That so is that, so true. That, it's going to change the way our space is organized here. That's true. We're going to do, tech, you and I, you know, we've met in person, you know, once yes. or twice. Yes. But we can do this and this was so much easier for you exactly. and me both. I mean, it's just, it's just a simple. I think there's a lot of things that will change. Yeah. I think a lot of it may be for the better. I think there will be a few things like that happiness quotient that I'm talking about. Absolutely. There will be challenges. We're at, how do we, yes, we can have the one-on-one -on -one conversations, but how do we get back that human touch? Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm a handshaker and a hugger. <laughs> and, and the fact is, the fact that I haven't, you know, shaken somebody's hand for, you know, seven months is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of jonesing for a handshake. Yeah. You know, I want to do that. And I don't know when that day is going to come back. But uh, I agree. I completely agree on that aspect because, and, and real estate at the core of it all, because we, we, as you said a little bit earlier, we talk a lot about technology, but this is first and foremost, and to me will always will be a human first business. Yes. So not having that aspect of just being able, for example, to close a home for your customer, for your client, and not be able to be in the same vicinity and just those, those, those simple things, even go to the office and be able to just, as you said, uh, exchange a little bit of, uh, over a coffee or something like that. That aspect, me as well as, as I've been thinking about it, like how are, are we going to be able to figure that out? Because that happiness factor, it is so critical. What, what, yeah. How are we going to figure it out? That's to your point. Yeah. Because yes. we will. We're, exactly. we're, a, we're, we're a very resilient uh, you know, uh, race. Absolutely. So I mean, we, will, we will figure out a way to deal with it. Uh, hopefully, you know, vaccines and all of those things will help get us there too. But yes. we'll find new ways. I'm, I'm sure we will. And hopefully we'll get back to some of the old ways too. Absolutely. Completely agree. Um, to kind of finish at us uh, all up, uh, Anthony, um, what are some of your personal and, and on or business goals over the remainder of the year? Is, uh, is anything... Uh, schedule for you any travel and, and something happening over the last couple of weeks um uh, travel was something i i i you know this is one of those watch what you wish for <laughs> uh, when i was traveling 75 percent of the time as much as i always loved being wherever i was going yes. when i got there i just i was so exhausted by the travel part of it and i and i have to admit even as i i think i'm a pretty positive person i used to complain uh, probably a little more than i should have about that so i i do look forward to to getting back out there and traveling and, and, and seeing people and being yes. in those great places. Uh, for me, uh, my focus is we've, you know, we've been able to spend a lot of time really working on making our platform better okay. and making our product better. We've learned you know, uh, a lot about what we were really good at and what awesome. areas that we thought we could be even better for our network. And so since I haven't been traveling and a lot of my team hasn't been traveling, we've been able to really focus in on that. That's awesome. Uh, you know, personally, my goals are I have a home in Hawaii. Okay. And I'm desperate to I usually go there about four times a year and I haven't okay. been there since last year. Oh so wow. I, I hope to I hope to get there for uh <laughs> part of December and awesome. and uh, and get some sunshine and and uh and, and some you know, just be out and uh, yes. you know, 
a different perspective than New York, New York City. <laughs> and, uh, and also to lose my, my, uh, my, my 20 pounds that I put on oh. over the, you know, okay. I'm, 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 I'm definitely one of those stress eaters. And I have to admit, I must have had a little more stress than I want to admit to. <laughs> I, I think I've eaten every comfort food that you can possibly imagine over the last seven months. And I've, I've, uh, I've, I've realized I, I just started running again, finally, the last couple of weeks. Wow. I, I see these people who have lost a hundred pounds or something. I don't know how they do it. Go, I don't know how they did I, it. I, I didn't go that way. Yeah, I, I just, I, no. you and me both on that one, Anthony, you and me both. Yeah, it did uh, not work out the way I did. Yeah. I should have come out of this like, you know, thinner exactly. and, and, uh, and taller and everything, but it just didn't work out that way. It didn't. Absolutely. You and me both on that one. I don't know how they do it, but they did. Definitely. Um, but health is important. It's something that you and I and everyone else yes. needs to focus on. And that physical health, especially Absolutely. when you're dealing with so much mentally uh, and emotionally, I just think it's something we do, do need to focus on. And that's a you know, do as I say, not as I've done, but I'm hopefully <laughs> taking my own advice now and, and getting back out there and getting the heart, getting the heart rest, uh, uh, racing a little bit, getting a little sweat and hopefully dropping oh, a couple completely. of these uh, comfort uh, comfort pounds that I put exactly, on. Exactly. Completely, completely agree. Um, thank you, Anthony. Uh, that's a wrap for this week's episode of Recovery with Anthony Pitt, President and CEO of Angle and Workers Americas. You can catch this episode on YouTube and on all platforms streaming podcasts. And remember, in the recovery, don't just get back to the same place, but strive to get to a better place. Thank you, everyone. Great work. Thanks, Thanks, Alan. Anthony. That was really fun. Thanks for the time today. I really appreciated okay. it. Yeah. Absolutely. That was fun. That was yeah, a lot absolutely. Of fun. Absolutely. Thanks to them for the time. I'm going to follow up and uh, give you a little update when uh, when it's ready to go, when it's ready to publish. I will share that with uh, Gabrielle as well. Maybe I was thinking if you guys would be interested to interested to share it with them. Um, yeah, yeah. Your, I'll, your I'll, I'll put up their PR or, and if they can put it out, uh, maybe, and we can maybe get some traffic that way. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Really, really thank you. Hopefully we'll see each other in person again someday. Absolutely. I hope to. I hope to. We're going to be able to do it maybe sometimes next year, hopefully. That would be great. Thanks, Absolutely. Alan. That was a treat. Bye. Thanks for me.